Um, good afternoon, everyone. Um, thank you for uh, um, showing up. And um, the first talk of this afternoon will be Fernando um, with uh, uh, talking about massive open online courses. Um, so please welcome Fernando. Um, just sorry. Uh, another very quick note first is um, I think Fernando um, is planning to use uh, the full 25 minutes. So any questions? You probably like to um, catch Fernando in the, uh, outside. So yeah. Hi. Thanks for coming. There are a lot of codes uh, that will be in this URL. Uh, what's the context of the, my, my talk? In PyCon US, Jessica McKiller uh, made a challenge for each of one of us to promote the next generation of Pythonists. And our challenge is one action to the next PyCon US. And my contribution is uh, Python for Zombies MOOC. I am computer science professor at FATEC, is a public university at Sao Paulo State. I'm also K-12 volunteer at weekends to teach programs for kids. The goal is spread the Python community by teaching for everybody for free in Portuguese and with a low cost platform, hours, equipment. Python for Zombies is the first Portuguese programming MOOC in Brazil. It's very similar to Coursera MOOCs. There are a lot of options. Mainly the students watch the videos. There are Q&A forum. Each answer can be upvoted or, or downvoted by its students. And I may maybe put a right answer star in some answers. But what's the difference from the other moods besides the language? First, is a community initiative, not of my university. Two years ago, Marcel Caracciolo, actually the president of Python Brazil Association, tell me, uh, told me that we need a MOOC to teach Python. My answer is cool, it will be ready in two, two years. Last year, in Campus Party Brazil, the biggest uh, conference for nerds, Marcel made an announcement, Fernando will launch next month the first MOOC to teach in Python in Portuguese and with a landing page for pre-resistation. My first reaction, uh, I have nothing ready, uh, six months, but with the help of the entire Python community, we did it. In one month, we designed the entire course and get the first week videos recorded. We took advantage of a platform that, that already existed uh, of training. The course has uh, eight weeks. The next weeks, I record the lessons anywhere. At Starbucks, uh, even at a flight uh, in <laughs> with a headset, noisy cancel headset, very useful. We use Python 3, is other difference. Uh, in foreign languages, there are some accents. Uh, there are more natural division in Python 3 than Python 2. The video are very small, without quizzes. There are some MOOCs that the videos are 20 minutes and 
between the videos, there are uh, many quizzes. Uh, I don't like the quizzes. I prefer to cut the videos uh, to create a personal bond between the teacher and the students. Because when the students are watching the video, boom, suddenly a quiz appears. I, I don't like this. There are rouge compilation of exercise, coding batch, Google Python class, cracking the code interview is a book of interview uh, problems, selective problems of ha hackathon Facebook. I put some 12 years old code in the middle of the lessons to promote diversity, it's very important. Actually, uh, we are 50,000. And some months ago, we need to move from Amazon to uh, DigitalOcean to cut costs. And before the migration, we made this draft to uh, warning the students. The Python community are promoting this MOOC in so many different ways. This is a fan page of The Walking Dead in Portugal. Some guy puts a, 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 a nice draft, The Walking Python. Some data. We are just only three people. Me to record the videos, uh, Django Dev, an uh, undergrad undergraduate student, and the Marcel Caraciolo, actually the president of Python Brazil Association. We have no money, no grants, no investments receiving, no crowdfunding. My only personal cost in equipment is the noise cancelling headset and four hours a week to answers to the students and the interactions. We have a, a platform cost, uh, actually $80 per month at DigitalOcean. 1,300 received the certificate. The level of the course, the MOOC, is very high, is the same level at my university, as a public university. There are a lot of visualizations. We have also an independent playlist at YouTube. Uh, there are some students who don't care about certifications and exercise who are only watching the, the videos. And a lot of cities. We had zombies. Some former students became the co-founders of the Paileiris Brazil Quarter. Actually, uh, the ladies are using the Python for Zombies MOOC to teach to the other ladies Python. And uh, they have... Uh, Q&A sections at uh, shopping centers at Starbucks. These girls, four months ago, organized the first Pi Ladies Conf in Brazil with more than 100 persons. Eight ladies and 20 gentlemen. Other interesting use case, University of São Paulo. Uh, São Paulo have four uh, public state universities. The biggest one, University of São Paulo, have 1,000 engineers that at, actually are using Python for Zombies videos for teaching uh, introduction to programming. It's awesome. The Zombies Operating Systems is Windows. 
I have to move my my operating system system from Linux to Windows in order to teach and record the, the videos. The Python community are promoting mainly at social networks, the MOOC. Uh, the students like very much the, the course, the length of video, the exercises. Where are the zombies? Uh, different of the other MOOCs, uh, the Python for Zombies are very popular in poor cities of Brazil. Uh, Northwest, Northwest cities are the most poor states. The Southwest is the more rich. An uh, in interesting experiment in the middle of MOOC was a massive coding dojo. With Google Hangout on air, we streaming a coding dojo section using nitros.io in collab mode. Hangout have a live Q&A feature and hundreds of students uh, made uh, some answers and the other students are upvote and downvote the, the, the questions. Uh, at some times, uh, I answered the top level questions. Uh, 400 students participate in the living Massive coding dojo. But talk is cheap. The best way to, to show the MOOC is as with some, some code. These are simple guess the number. And very useful to teach some basic, basic program at what the guest 42 <laughs> I win in one shot one thing I teach is the importance of the free software actually I hacked the main the model the running <laughs> method to return 42. The students like this kind of thing. Python is a language for hackers, and hackers like the, very much the MOOC. When I had classes uh, with K-12, one girl, told me that, that uh, she don't like numbers. And she modified this code to this code. She think it's better to, to guess the name of one girl. And this is not my code. The code of 12 years girl is very interesting to teach, to show some code that, that's not, to tell you as all the code is, is very interesting to teach. I will show you the photo of this lady. Is the left side actually is working on typing, <laughs> not uh, the, the front lady. Anna Carolina is the left side before the, the, the typing some code. Other interesting code 
is the cipher of Caesar. By ladies, this is awesome. Chinese. Show. Python 3 use Unicode. With Unicode, we can do everything about letters uh, and strange idioms. This is the code of the other 12 years girl. Not my code. Uh, it's a very interesting. A plus B, 42. Wow! <laughs> it's a great. Print A, print B. I create a class and I overwrite the render add to return a 42. This type of code made the students crazy. The students like the code that uh, put 42 as a result. Factorial of 666 is a very large number, but 42 is best. Fibonacci also 42. The students became crazy because it's a advanced programming, metaprogramming, but study like to see uh, this kind of things. It's uh, more interesting to have funny samples to teach. I um, made a request to Facebook API and I'm searching for the ultimate answer. In my profile of Facebook, don't have the key ultimate answer. But actually, we override the under missing to return 42 also. Some students actually prefer to receive challenges. I put some codes that are Facebook hackathon selective tests. The students not only resolve the challenges, but we are able at the end of the course to resolve the challenge in one line. It's crazy, it's amazing. The beauty will save the code. Quick sort in C language is boring. In Python, we put the beauty of the algorithm of the quick sort. It's, it's a, it's a good way to teach, to show the beauty of the algorithm the classic algorithms. Of course, the students like to make some windows, GUI. Oui. 
in the course we made this with some few lines it's possible to make Python, the one interesting thing, all my my classes, my my codes, uh, uh, is with very few lines. It's a very simple. With this line of codes, we access an API of World Cup, and these are the results of the matches. <laughs> of course, yeah, it's worse for Brazil, <laughs> but uh, we are in Germany, and Germany is, is the champion. It's a simple code. The students like it. The useful cost. We, we needed to to teach the programming in a context of the students. And the last code is hacking Facebook photos. The process of authentication is boring, very boring. This is uh, a Facebook playground to test apps, and I will steal the token to my code without any library, and if the internet permits, I'm accessing the Facebook to download all my friends' photos. I will show online. This is the photos um, data. Where is my coat? Thing. And this very interesting because the, the students like to hack Facebook. I made a Android wallpaper for this photo from with these photos. When I forgot the name of one student, I took took. I the app showed the, the name of my students. And benefits for for my university visibility. I also made the flipped classrooms because the, the presential students watched the videos and we have more time to code in dojo and exercises. From, for Python community, the MOOC, Python for Zone, became a, a kind of Trojan horse to enter in many universities uh, all materials are common, Creative Commons share alike. We made a great impact. Three, three folks uh, impacting in 50,000. 
I'm working in Spanish version with a Chemica platform, the Argentina platform. And Python, the next generation, our challenge. Don't think too much, just do it. Thank you. Um, yeah, so there's, on, there's no um, time left for questions anymore, unfortunately. So um, we've got five minutes to change the room. Um, so if you can catch um, uh, Fernando outside, if you have any questions, that'd be good. Thank you. <laughs>